Dear ICS faculty, staff, students, parents, friends of our students and parents and our teachers, dear ICS community, this Christmas concert that comes to wrap up this extraordinary 2020 is a historical moment. We never had an online Christmas concert before and we do hope that we won't have a Christmas concert online ever again. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you health and joy, good thoughts, good times, good vibes. On behalf of all my colleagues, our program's directors, we wish you all this from the bottom of our hearts. And to treat you nicely and Christmassy, you know we have a special MC, a guest that we all believe in. Enjoy and thank you very much for watching us online. Please do it again. Merry Christmas! Oh, good evening. Welcome to my humble home at the North Pole. My elves and I have lots of work making sure everyone gets their dreams fulfilled this Christmas. Indeed, we're preparing your gifts too. <laughs> Tonight we have a special treat for you. We'll be listening to the famous ACS Christmas concert as I make my way around the world to deliver merry tidings of joy and happiness to one and all. Come with me. Each year as I've roamed the starlit skies on that magical night before Christmas, I've had the pleasure of witnessing the grandiose splendor of the music that echoes from the great concert halls of Vienna. And as their classical tunes of celebration pour out in a stream of pure joy, my nose, like Rudolph's, would light up red with warmth and glee. Now what might surprise you is that I'm flying over the homes of the ACS instrumentalists, and I got the exact same feeling once again. Why? Well, you're about to see for yourselves. <laughs> as much as it makes me happier than anything to make millions of kids, big and small, happy, it doesn't come without a headache or two for your old man. My workplace is louder than you could ever imagine. With machines buzzing and hammers clashing everywhere you turn, masterfully wielded by my helping hands tirelessly every day. What strikes me most about my journey to the world's every corner is how peaceful it is. It's just me, my reindeer, the stars, and the distant echo of Christmas Carol as it harmonizes with the wind. To capture the peace of a magical Christmas Eve, please welcome Joanna Tsonova with Silent Night, followed by Lilia Chaturbasheva with box prelude in C minor.
One of my other favorite days of the year has always been the day when all the letters finally flooded in and we get to see what we'll be busy making. Kids wish for all kinds of things, from toy construction sets to fairy costume, iPhones, cars, and even Chromebooks to replace the ones they've accidentally forgotten in class 111. But for centuries, one of the most wished for gifts was the Nutcracker. You know, the way in which it seems to come from a different galaxy. You almost wonder what it would tell you if it came alive. Oh wait, it did, and what a tale it told indeed. Let's hear it all from the students from the instrumental studio and their themes from The Nutcracker by Tchaikovsky and Waltzes by Strauss. nothing I adore more than dreaming of other worlds. So much so that I'd like to do it again. Join me as Teodora and Alexandra Daskolovi take us far, far away with Kachatorian Sabre Dance. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next, I went to visit Svetlazar Dimitrov and Alitsa Georgieva. They had left not just a plate of cookies and a glass of milk for my journey, they also sent me off with a couple of beautiful melodies. Second Waltz by Shostakovich and the Christmas Waltz by Jules Stein.
As I was getting ready to take off and dusted the snow off the seat of my sleigh, a little bird came and proudly took my place, a sparrow. It's always amazed me how unafraid of the cold these tiny creatures are. Oh, and speaking of the BG drama, was rehearsing a play about the sparrows. Now, if only I could remember its name. Ah, yes, We the Sparrows by Jordan Radichkov. Come and take a look. Се е появил различно. Е, даде. Е, даде. Тревата най-напред си показва носа от земята. И сточва се нагоре. И тъй се остава. Само с един зелен нос. Ама, дървото и то никне като тревата. Само, че е много по... М- голямо. И цялото се покрива с... 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 зелена перушина. Е, даде. Е, даде. Ама на есен... Перушината на дървото пада и то голголичко цяла зима трепери от студа. Ама нали ние връбчетата всяка година му казваме да не си маха перушината, да не студува през снеговете. Но мигър можеш да кажеш нещо на дърво и то да те разбере. Ние, при да се пръкнем, дълго живяхме в яйце. Да не ти дава Господ да живееш в яйце. Вътре тъмно, тясно. Ни прозорец, ни врата има. На всичкото отгоре и е толкова тясно, че човек няма къде да се обърне и да си опъне крачката. Да, така е. Седиш по цял ден и цяла нощ и не знаеш навън. Ден ли е? Нощ ли е? Слънце ли грее? Или пък на възни се ходят по небето? Що му сетих, че в мене всичко заяква? Реших да разбия затвора. Почнах да опитвам с човка стените на, я... на яйцето, а те твърди, твърди, по-твърди от... От бъмбър! От зранце! Да, точно! А аз за първи път в живота си разбивах стените на този тесен затвор. И човката ужасно ме болеше. Дори на съм не болеше, когато решавах да подремна. Но не се отчаявах. Три седмици време си мина и една сутрин. Както се развивам с човката тавана на затвора и... 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 И чуваме едно силно... Хряс! И яйцето се разполови на две. Е, то не може да се разполови на три. Аз пък, като се измъкнах от яйцето, оглеждам се и виждам кри мен в гнездото лежат още яйца. И от тях се носи... Писукане! Навеждам се над най-близкото яйце и почуквам щовката, също като по морс. Чук-чук, чук-чук-чук-чук. Това бях аз. Чувам аз, че някой чука щовка по яйцето ми и разбрах, че идва подкрепление. И аз се окоръжих. И след малко затворът се превърна в развилини. А ние ликуваме. Та ликуваме си в гнездото, че сме излезли най-после на свобода. И нещо ни се чува. Усушваме се. А, не чистон? Обръщаме се да видим откъде е идва. И виждате, че един вървец успя да си покаже само главата навън. Това бях аз. Шията ми притисната и не може да излезе от затвора. Въртя се аз. Писукам нищо. Захванахме се тогава и те освободихме. Защото без нашата помощ едва ли щеше да излезеш на бял свят. Какъвто си слаботелесен. То за това и така го кръстихме. Чир. Чир е много странен вравец. Макар и слаботелесен, още щом се излюпи и поиска веднага да хвърчи. Ще хвърча, ми? Ще хвърча? Как така ще хвърчиш? За да хвърчиш, трябва най-напред да си смениш пуха, да ти поникнат пера и да заякнат крилете ти. Ей, стига си се опъвал. Не чуваш ли какво ти се приказва? Опъва се той! А, като се чукнах с човката, я как мокна и веднага се съгласи. Забелязала съм, че когато човек не разбира от дума, трябва да го удариш по главата, за да разбере. Чир е точно като хората. Ако му кажеш дума, няма да разбере. 
Но ако го удариш по главата, веднага разбира. Та да говорихме за яйцата, те се разбиваха с трясък едно по едно, а ние връбчетата се появявахме на белия свят. Гнездото се напълни за чудо и приказ. Множаха се връбчета. Кое е по-силно, кое е по-слабо връбче? Кое е по-едро, кое е със средна големина? Кое е по-силно, кое е по-слабо връбче? Кое е по-едро, кое е със средна големина? И така нататък, и, и така, така нататък. нататък. Помните ли как по едно време в гнездото се търкул на пъшкаш дебелачко? И ние веднага го нарекохме дебелачко. Ей, я не обиждай. Ами ти, когато излезна свобода, беше голям колкото... Мен! Напълнихме гнездото догоре с връбци и видяхме, че са останали още две яйца. Отивам до едното. Почуквам го леко. Да но ми се обади някой отвътре. Е? Но отвътре не идва никакъв звук. Е, почукай пак. Е, почуквам пак и пак се ослушваме. Е? Е, пак нищо. Хей! Hey! Си вътре. Вътре, 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 вътре. Човек или звяр? Обади се! Е? Е? Ни човек, ни звяр се обажда. Това е яйце запъртък. Винаги където има много яйца, има и запъртък. Добре, че хората не се мътят като нас, иначе тук виж и при тях може да се случи запъртък да има. Вижте, тук има още едно яйце. Последно, да почукам ли? Абе, драги ми господине, не можете ли да чукате по-леко? Ей, тъй! Той ви рекох аз и щупих яйцето и се измъкнах навън. Измъкна се? Ама, кисел, кисел, да не ти се ще да го погледнеш? Аз бях наблизо, а ти ме бутна. Ами, трябваше да видя какво минава под гнездото. Добре. Ама защо се блъскаш? Абе, драги ми господине, не съм се пръкнал на този свят, за да ми се правят забележки. Драги ми господине. То, за това така и те нарекохме. Драги ми господине. Моля. По-нататък ще се занимаваме с теб. Та какво ще да кажа? А... Гладен съм. Много съм гладен. Знаеш ли, че особено когато човек е гладен, не може да мисли. За това... И не се сещаш докъде си стигнал. Зато и, преди да продължиш, да седнем да закусим. А? Та стоим си ние на дървото, пощим си перушината и по едно време гледаме отдалече се задава някакъв непознат врабец. Едва се държи на краката си, залита и всеки момент може да се струполи на земята. Гледаме го, че все повече се приближава и със сетни сили се залавя за дървото. Та, мълча аз. Гледам разсеяно и едва ам дишам. Нямам дреха отгоре си. Само една юнашка фланелка. Ама, толкова похабена, че дори на фланелка не прилича. Юфу! Питаме те как се казваш, а ти... Юфу! То хубаво Юфу, ама как се казваш? Откъде си? От Китай. И се казвам Юфу. Юфу! Юфу! Юнашка фланелка. Че то има ли врабци в Китай? Има, разбира се. Живеехме заедно с другите врабци около едно. Оризище. Китайците го обработват, а ние врабчетата требим всичкото насекомо, дето на нас я вреди на оризи. Шшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшшш
snowing and blowing a bushel so fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells chime in jingle bell time. Dancing and prancing in jingle bell square. In the frosty air, what a bright time is the right time to rock the night away. Jingle bell time is a swell time to go gliding in a one horse sleigh. Giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet, jingle around the clock. Mixing a mingle in the jingle and beat. That's the jingle bell rock. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells chime in jingle bell time. Dancing and prancing in jingle bell square. In the frosty air, what a bright time is the right time to rock the night away. Jingle bell time is a swell time to go gliding on a one horse sleigh. Giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet, jingle around the clock. Mix and a mingle in the jingle and be. That's the jingle bell. That's the jingle bell. That's the jingle bell rock. Merry Christmas. Next, it's time to visit Eva Doikina. Her wish was one that I, like all of you, have probably related to. As we are facing undoubtedly some of the hardest times in our lives right now, we're all looking for our heroes to help us through it. Now, I couldn't bring a hero for her, but perhaps I'll be able to answer her wish with my reminder. We, ourselves, and our communities are the heroes in this story, as long as we encourage each other to stay strong. And what better time to deliver this message than Christmas? As though particular this year, it still brings hope, which is needed now more than ever. So let's enjoy Eva's angelic voice with her performance of Hero. Oh! 
Speaking of unusual circumstances, I'd also like to point out that it's really not all bad. Yes, you may not be able to attend huge parties like last Christmas, but your families will appreciate the extra time they will get to spend with you. To tell you what she will do better this Christmas than the last, welcome Darina Markova with Last Christmas. But if you kiss me now, I don't 
Since Darina really put me in the mood for Christmas classics, our next performer really did not disappoint me when I paid her a visit. Let's hear Katerin Marinova with Mary Did You Know. When things get a little sad, I never shy away from cracking a joke or two to get me through. And as I visited the next group of kids, I could tell I'm not the only one. Here to turn your frown upside down are the English drama with black comedy by Peter Schaefer and Romeo and Juliet. I think now is the perfect time to let out a ho 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 Hello, Asia drama enthusiasts. I'm Ivan Kamberov from 10th grade, and I'll be playing Brinsley, a poor as a church mouse artist. Watch me slide into and out of trouble with my smooth talk this spring. Hi, everybody. My name is Neda. I'm from 11th grade, and I play the spicy character of Clea, the mistress of Mr. Brinsley Miller from the play Black Comedy by Peter Schaffer. And since every play needs a character who creates a total mess and absolute confusion, I'm here to give you exactly that. So keep watching and I'll see you in just a second. Thank you, Clea. Thank you very much. 
Any time. You had no right. No. You walked out on me. Oh, is that what I did? You said you never wanted to see me again. Well, I never saw you at all. How could you be walked out on? You know what? You should live in the dark, Brinsley. It's your natural element. Where that means? It means you don't really want to be seen. Why is that, Brinsley? Do you think if someone really saw you, they would never love you? Oh, go away. I want to know. Yes, you always want to know. Pick, pick, pick away. Why is that clear? Have you ever told why you need to do it? Well? Well, perhaps because they care about you. Perhaps there's nothing to care about. Just a fake oh, artist. Oh, God. Stop pitying yourself. It's always your vice. I told you when I met you, you could either be a good artist or a chick fake. You didn't like it because they refused just to give you applause. God knows you certainly oh did that. God, is that what she gives you? 20 hours of ego massage every day. At least our life together isn't the exact replica of the Holy Inquisition you made of ours. I didn't have an affair with you. It was just four years of Nuki with Orkemada. And <laughs> don't say you didn't enjoy it. Enjoyed? I hated every second of it. Yes, I remember. Every second. I recall... When you left for Finland, it was the happiest day of my life. Well, mine too. I sighed with relief. So did I. I went to Tassik that very night. So did I. It was up with the liar and the timbrel. Good, then that's all right. Fine. Super. Duper. It's lovely seeing you look so happy. Oh, you too. Radiant with self-fulfillment. If you felt like this, why did you come back? Well, if you felt like this, then why did you tell Mrs. Punnett I was still at the top of the heap? I never said that. Oh, yes, you did. Never. Yes, you did. Of course I didn't. You invented that ten minutes ago when you were playing Mrs. Punnett. Well, okay. So I did. Hi, I'm Annie from 95, and I'll be playing Clea in this year's production of Black Comedy in ACS. She's a mischievous and dramatic mistress to the main character, and I'm very excited to play her. Yes. It is. Good heavens, Mrs. Bonnet. What on earth are you doing up there? I'm just giving your bedroom a bit of a tidy, sir. At this time of night? Better late than never, as they say. And know how you like your bedroom to be nice and inviting when you're giving one of your parties. Yes, 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 yes of course. I didn't want to disturb you, so I come on up here. Good heavens, I must have upset something. It's as black as new gates knockers up here. Are you playing one of your saucy games, Mr. Miller? No, Mrs. Bonnet, we've had a fuse. It's all over the house. Oh, a fuse. I thought it might be one of them saucy games in the dark, sir. Sardines or Piccadilly. The kind of then in a general squeeze up. I know you're rather partial to ginky games, Mr. Miller, so I just wondered. It is a fuse, Mrs. Bonnet. The man's manning it now. The lights will be on any minute. Well, that'll be a relief for you, won't it? Yes, uh, of course. Now, why don't you just go on home? I'm sorry I couldn't come before, sir. I was delayed, you see. My rose has been taken queer again. I quite understand. It's a tummy. There's a lump under a belly button the size of grapefruit. Or it. Poor little Rosie. I said to her this evening, I said, There's no good in your belly, Molish, my girl. You're going to the hospital first thing in the morning and getting yourself ultra-violated. Well, hadn't you better be getting back to poor little Rosie? She must need you, surely? And there's really nothing you can do here tonight. Are you sure of that, sir? Positive. Thank you. I mean, I know what this place can look like after one of your evenings. A gypsy caravan isn't in it. Gym bottles all over the floor. Brass and panties in the sink. And God knows what in the... Hello, I'm George Kakriyov from Section 99. And I play Colono Melkert, the one and only Colono. So he's basically this father. He's this classic father that he de strongly disapproves of his daughter's marriage. Like, he does not like um, her future husband, he's very cold, he's a military man, so he's extremely serious. He doesn't show much emotion besides anger, because he's really short-tempered. And yes, this is basically me. Cold and disapproving. Hello, and a very Merry Christmas to the entire ACS community. My name, my dear Shakespeare's, is Krasimira Kamanova, and I'm a senior, but for the past year, I've been kind of living under a different identity. Hi, my name is Carol Melkett, and I'm the most spoiled, frightful gel in all of England. I'm Nina Wasselski, and I will be playing Miss Barnival in the Black Comedy Play. 
Miss Burnival is an old, classy lady. She is Brinsley's neighbor, and she's very well behaved until she drinks alcohol. She's very against drinking alcohol, but she does it anyway. And when she gets drunk, she does all kinds of funny things, and that's the reason why I can't wait to play her. Diamond Blast! Is there anybody there? In here, Daddy Pigs! Can't you put the light on, damn it? I've almost knocked myself out on a bloody milk bottle. We've got the fuse. Nothing is working. This is my father, Colonel Melkett, Miss Furnival. She's from upstairs. Good evening. I'm taking refuge for the moment with Mr. Miller. I'm not very good in the dark. When did this happen? Five minutes ago. The main just blew. And where's this young man of yours? In the flat opposite. He's trying to find candles. You mean he hasn't got any? No! We can't even find the matches! I see. No organization. Bad sign. Daddy, please. It could happen to any of us. Not to me. What the hell is that? Oh, that's, um, some of Brinsley's work. Is it by Jove? And how much does that cost? I think he's asking 50 pounds for it. My god. Do you like the flat, Daddy? He's furnished it very well, hasn't he? I mean, it's rich, but it's not, um, gaudy pegs. Very elegant indeed. Good. He's got excellent taste. Now that's what I understand by a real work of art. You can clearly see what it's meant to be. Good heavens. What is it? Nothing. It's just that Buddha... It so closely resembles the one Harold Gorinch has. It must have cost a pretty penny, what? He must be quite well off. Oh, by Jove, it's got pretty colors. You know Mr. Gorinch? Oh, very well indeed. We're excellent friends. He has such a lovely things. Oh. What? This furniture, surely... My goodness! Daddy, why don't you look in here? It's Brain Studio. There's something I really want you to see before he comes back. What? It, it, it's a surprise. Go and see, please. Very well, Dumpling. Anything to oblige. Excuse me. Miss Furnival, you're a sport, aren't you? I don't know. What is this furniture doing in here? It belongs to Harold Gorringe. I know. We've done something absolutely frightful. We've stolen all his best pieces and put Brain's horrid old bits into his room. But why? It's disgraceful. Because Brinsley's got nothing, Miss Furnival. Nothing at all. He's as poor as a church mouse. If Daddy had seen this place as it looks normally, he'd have forbidden our marriage on the spot. Mr. Gorringe wasn't there to ask, so we just took the chance. If Harold Gorringe knew that anyone had touched his furniture or his porcelain, he'd go out of his mind. And as for that Buddha, it's the most precious piece he owns. It's worth hundreds of pounds. Oh, please, Miss Furnival. You won't give us away, will you? We're desperate. It's only for an hour. Oh, please, please. Very well. I won't betray you. Oh, thank you. But it'll have to go back exactly as it was, just as soon as Mr. Bamberger and your father leave. I swear. Oh, Miss Furnival, you're an angel. Do have a drink. Oh, no? You don't. Well, have a bitter lemon for me. Thank you. That I won't refuse. Well, there's certainly a surprise. And that's supposed to be a sculpture? It's not supposed to be. It is. Well, they would make for good garden implements. I'd like him for turning the soil. That's not very funny, Daddy. <laughs> Sorry, Dumpling. Speak as you find. I wish you wouldn't call me Dumpling. Well, there's no point wasting this. We may need it. Don't be nervous, Miss Furnival. Bryn will be here in a minute with the candles. Then I'll leave, of course. I don't want to be in your way. You're not at all. Hello, everyone. I'm Nicola Kralev, and if you want to see me struggle with the British accent by playing the witty and sarcastic neighbor Harold Gorange, then stay tuned for what we have to offer. Hello, darlings. My name is Sylvia Galiski, and I play Miss Furnival. 
Oh, you're so right, Fernie. Rudeness and vulgarity. That's it to a T. The manners of some people today are beyond belief. Honestly, did I tell you what happened in my shop last Friday? I don't think I did. Um, no, Mr. Gorinch. I don't think so. Well, I just opened up. It was about a quarter to ten and I was dusting off the teapot, you know, rocking them collect the dust. Something shocking. When who should walk in but that Mrs. Levitt, you know, the ginger-haired bit I told you about? The one who thinks she's God's gift to bachelors. Anyway, she's got in her hand a vase I told her last week. It was a birthday present for an old geezer she's having a bit of a dink-donk with somewhere in Earl's court, hoping to collect all his lolly when he dies, as I read the situation. I'm a pretty good judge of character, as you know, Fernie, and she's a real grasper if I ever saw one. Anyway, this vase, it was a nice bit of kangxi, blue and white with a good orange peel glaze, absolutely authentic. I'd let her have it for 25 pounds, and she got infinitely less of the bargain, no argument about that. Well, and she prances her hair all done up in one of them buffon hairdos, you know, tardy French-like. It would have looked fancy on a girl half her age with twice her looks. Exactly. You know the sort. And you know what she says to me? Mr. Gorringe, she says, I've been cheated. Her very words, cheated. No, she did not say that she's been cheated. And do you know who's else being cheated? People going to the supermarkets, you know, like, like supermarkets with all those prams, 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 prams in the supermarket. All those hideous wire prams with babies and barbs, conflicts over there. It's all they say and then they leave you to yourself. Biscuits over there, cat food over there, fish cakes over there, Eric over there, pink stamps, green stamps, free balloons, television dinners, pets you go out, oh, Jack, it's so daddy, daddy, it's awful. Then the color well, the hide us in the leather jackets, laughing with the scorn, but not for long, oh no, no, no. Shall stand when he appeared? She struck him from the motorcycles, he dash of helmets to the ground. Yeah, barely, I say, on the thee. There's still be on a hand of gasoline, then and steerers popping and jousting with heads. Keep up, keep up, keep up. My, my, Fernie. Have you been hitting it again? Oh, dear. My name is Kurian Dimitrov from Section 8 Day, and I play Chupanzi in the black comedy drama. Chupanzi is a German refugee who is delighted to be in England. He sees art in the void and the meaning of a meaningless world. His speech is vivid and exquisite. Oh, good gracious. What an extraordinary object. Oh, that's your spare piece of my work I keep in here. Spare? Maybe, but fascinating. You really think so? I do, yeah. Well, in that case, you should see my main collection. It's next door. My fiancé will show you. One amazement at a time, if you please. In this glutinous age, it is easy to get visual indigestion. Hard to find visual alka-seltzer. Permit me to digest this first. Oh, by all means. Good, yes, there's no hurry, no hurry at all. Only, why don't you digest in the dark? I beg your pardon? Well, you never believe it, sir, but I actually made a piece to be appreciated in the dark. I was working on a very interesting theory. You know how the Victorians said children should be seen and not heard? Well, I say art should be felt and not seen. Amazing. Yes, isn't it? I call it my theory of factual tranquility. If it doesn't stab you to the quick, it's not art. Look, why don't you give me that torch and try for yourself? Very well, I will. Thank you. Now just stretch out your arms and feel it all over, sir. Have a good long feel. Do you see what I mean? Amazing! 
absolutely incredible. It's quite true. Like this, the piece becomes a masterpiece at once. It does? But of course, I feel it here and here. The two needles of man's unrest. Self-love and self-hate leading to the same point. That's the meaning of the work, isn't it? Oh, yes, of course. Of course, come. I'll Christian it for you. Give me the torch, please. The torch? My torch! Give me my torch. I wish to illuminate my own illumination. Oh, well, certainly, yes. Here, sir. Now, I Christian this. The spirit of Shakespeare. See? Malvolio, Hamlet. Malvolio, as you know, was sick of self-love. Hamlet of self-hate. He could not love others because he could not love himself. This is an old disease diagnosed long ago by Saint Augustine. But you obviously know all this. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. You're obviously a great expert, sir. I'm um, yeah, absolutely. Cab realize oh that in the dark. That's what I call essential connoisseurship. Anyone can see symbols in the light, but to recognize them in the dark means you got my point. My whole point, factual tactility. You're amazing, sir. It was intelligent, he. Who knows? You may even be able to appreciate my latest doctrine, tactile factuality. Of course. Why not? You're a genius creator. I'm a genius critic. We're made for each other. Standing here now, I can feel the vital trust of the argument, the essential anguish, the stress and torment of our times. Simple, but not simple-minded. Ingenious, but not ingenuous. Above all, it has real moral force. Of how many modern words can one say that, good people? and I'm going to be playing Gregory and the Nurse at ACS Drama's newest production Romeo and Juliet. Gregory has the dirtiest mind out of all characters, while the Nurse is like Juliet's second mother. So if you, like me, love Shakespeare's work, or if you're too lazy to read Romeo and Juliet by yourself, you should come and see us. Hi, I'm Misha. I'm an idiot and apparently I never learned how to read. So I believe that I will make the best Peter and Samson to ever cross the streets of Verona. Gregory, I swear we can't let them humiliate us. We won't take their garbage. <laughs> no, because then we'd be garbage men. What I mean is, if they make us angry, we'll pull out our swords. Maybe you should focus on pulling yourself out of trouble, Samson. I hit hard when I'm angry. But it's hard to make you angry. One of those dogs from the Montague house can make me angry. Angry enough to run away. You won't stand and fight. A dog from that house will make me angry enough to take a stand. If I pass one of them on the street, I'll take the side closer to the wall and let them walk in the gutter. Hi ACS community and theater fans. My name is Simona and I'm going to play Paris and the Prince in this amazing production from Angela. I really hope you enjoy it. And by the way, just a quick little warning. I will shout at you. Like a lot. But this is just a low. Most of the time. You rebels, enemies of the peace, men who turn their weapons against their own neighbors. They won't listen to me. You dare, you men, you beasts who satisfy your anger with fountains of each other's blood. I will have you tortured if you don't put down your swords and listen to an angry prince. Three times now, rats have broken out in the city, all because of a casual word from you, old Capulet and Montague. Three times the peace has been disturbed in our streets and Verona's old citizens have had to take off their dress clothes and pick up rusty old spears to bite you. If you ever cause a disturbance on our streets again, you'll pay for it with your lives. Everyone else, 
Go away for now. You, Caplet, come with me. Montague, this afternoon come to the old free town, the court where I deliver judgments, and I will tell you what else I want from you. As for the rest of you, I will say this once more. Go away or be put to death. My name is Ivaila and I'm from A3. I play Montague, who if you didn't know is Romeo's father. He is a very polite and peaceful gentleman, except for the times when his enemies, the Caplets, are around. I also play Lady Montague, who is Montague's wife and obviously Romeo's mother. She is a very elegant woman with very good manners and is always the one who tries to keep Montague out of trouble whenever he gets angry at the Caplets. Hello folks, my name is Laura and I came by the invited on the journey, depicting the lives of two star-crossed lovers, whose families hate towards each other, he's going to resolve in his fatal end. Now, there's no time for lengthy explanations. Come and see me in the shoes of the sassy charismatic and volume. That's it from me, Who started this old fight up again? Speak, nephew. Were you here when it started? Your servants were fighting your enemy servants before you got here. I drew my sword to part them. Right then that hothead to bow showed up with his sword ready. He turned at me and swiped his sword around, making the air hiss. As we were trading blows, more and more people showed up to join the fight until the prince came and broke everyone up. Oh, where's Romeo? Have you seen him today? I'm glad he wasn't here for this fight. Madam, I had a lot in my mind an hour before dawn this morning, so I went for a walk. Underneath the sycamore grove that grows on the west side of the city, I saw your son taking an early morning walk. I headed toward him, but he saw me coming and hid in the woods. I thought he must be feeling the same way I was, wanting to be alone and tired of his own company. I figured he was avoiding me, and I was perfectly happy to leave him alone and keep to myself. He's been seen there many mornings crying tears that are drops to the morning dew and making a cloudy day cloudier with his sighs. But as soon as the sun rises in the east, my sad son comes home to escape the light. He locks himself up alone in his bedroom, shuts his windows to keep out the beautiful daylight and makes himself an artificial night. This mood of his is going to bring bad news, unless someone smart can fix what's bothering him. My noble uncle, do you know why he acts this way? I don't know. And he won't tell me. Have you done everything you could to make him tell you the reason? I've tried, and many of our friends have tried to make him talk. But he keeps his thoughts to himself. He doesn't want any friend but himself. And though I don't know whether he's a good friend to himself, he certainly keeps his own secrets. He's like a flower bud that won't open itself up to the world because it's been poisoned from within by parasites. If we could only find out why he's sad, We'd be as eager to help him as we were to learn the reason for his sadness. Look, here he comes. If you don't mind, please step aside. You either have to tell me what's wrong or else tell me no over and over. I hope you're lucky enough to hear the true story by sticking around. Come, madam. Let's go. You folks who are watching, I greet you. I am the refined mother of Juliet, Lady Capulet. I love Juliet and I always read her opinion. I always keep my grace and polite tone. You will feel calm whenever you're around me. Of course, except if the Montagues are there. <laughs> People find it enjoyable watching me on stage, and I hope you will too. <laughs> what are you doing staring there? Now be honest with me, and I'll be honest with you. My name is Juliet, and I'm mostly known for my common name, Emma Tabajka. My family, the Capulets, are the It family in Verona, but I'd say they're just snobs. And they consider me some teenage, dreamy girl who never does her chores and sleeps all day. But obviously, I'm way more than that. I consider myself charming and kind and good to all. You know, the only thing I... My heart seriously desires this love, to find the happiness and the joy.
Well, honey, marriage is exactly what we have to discuss. Tell me, my daughter, Julia, what is your attitude about getting married? Well, how do I respond to that, mother? It is simply an honor I do not dream of. An honor? If I weren't your only nurse, I'd say you had sucked wisdom from the breast that fed you. Well, sweetheart, start thinking about marriage now. Here, in Verona, there are girls younger than you. Girls from noble families who have already become mothers. By my count, I was already your mother at just about your age, while you remain a virgin. Well then, I'll say this quickly. Paris wants you as his bride. What a man, young lady! He's as great a man as any in the whole world. He's as perfect as if he were sculpted from wax. Oh, summertime in Verona has no flower as fine as him. No, he's a fine flower. Truly a flower. So, honey, what do you say? Can you love this gentleman? Tonight, you'll see him at our feast. Study Paris' face and find pleasure in his beauty. Examine every line of his features and see how they work together to make him handsome. If you're confused, just look into his eyes. This man is single and he lacks only a bride to make him perfect and complete. As is right, fish live in the sea and it is wrong for a beauty like you to hide from a handsome man like him. Many people think he's handsome and whoever becomes his bride will be just as admired. You would share all that he possesses and by having him, you would lose simply nothing. Lose nothing? In fact, you'd get bigger. Men make women bigger by getting them pregnant. So, sweetheart, give us a quick answer. Can you accept Paris' love? I'll look at him and try to like what I see if, of course, it is likable, but I won't let myself fall for him any more than your permission allows. Peace. I'm done talking. May God choose you to receive his grace. You are the prettiest baby I ever nursed. The last performance has made me realize not only does ACS have talented soloists, but collaborators as well. These students were able to even now create something beautiful together. Oh sorry, what did you say? You want more? Hop on and let's see the dance program with Opposite Attractions.
In the spirit of teamwork, I was more than thrilled to see that the ACS Choir had managed to prepare not one, but three numbers for us. Let's hear Believer by Daniel Reynolds, A Red Robin by Daniel Brinsmed, and A Little Love on Christmas by Roger Emerson.
I've always been proud to be an inseparable part of one of the world's most colorful holidays. But if there's one thing that almost manages to outsparkle the Christmas festivities sometimes, that's the Broadway stage. So what better way to celebrate than seeing the magic that happens on it? Now let's go to Chicago with the ACS musical. Hi, I'm Mia, and I play Roxanne Velma, and you're watching ACS Musical. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong, but he doesn't care, he'll stream. He follows round like some droopy eye pop. He loves me so, that funny honey of mine. He ain't no sheep, that's no great physique. And Lord knows he ain't got the smarts. But look at that so I tell you that whole. Roxy Hart in this year's musical Chicago, which you should come and definitely see during the month of May. Now, uh, this is my last Christmas concert, so for you I have prepared the song Roxy, and I hope you enjoy it. You want to know something? I always wanted my name in the paper. Before Amos, I used to date this well-to-do ugly bootlegger. 
he used to like to dress me up, take me out, and show me off. Once it said in the paper, Ganglands Alcapelli seen at chess video with cute red-headed Kareem. That was me. I clipped it out and saved it. Now look. Roxy Rock Chicago. Look, I'm gonna tell you the truth. Not that the truth really matters, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. The thing is, see, I'm older than I ever intended to be. All my life, I wanted to be a dancer in vaudeville. Oh yeah, have my own act. But no, 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 no. It was one big world full of no. Life, the names came along. Sweet, safe Amos who never says no. You know, some guys are like mirrors, and when I catch myself in Amos' face, I'm always a kid. Yeah, could love a guy like that. I gave up the vaudeville idea because after all those years, well, you sort of figure out opportunity just passed you by. Oh, but it ain't. <laughs> oh, no, 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 but it ain't. If this fling guy gets me off, and with all this publicity, I could still get into vaudeville. I could still have my own act. Now I got me a world full of yes! The name on everybody's lips is gonna be Roxy The lady raking in the chips is gonna be Roxy I'm gonna be a celebrity that means somebody everyone knows they're gonna recognize my eyes, my hair, my teeth, my legs, my nose. From just some dumb mechanic's wife, I'm gonna be Roxy. Who says that murder's not in They're gonna wait outside in line to get to see Roxy. Think of those autographs outside. Good luck to you, Roxy. And I'll appear in the lavalier that goes all the way down to my waist. Here a ring, there a ring, everywhere a ring the link. But oh, The audience loves her And I love the audience And the audience loves me for loving them And I love the audience for loving me And we just love each other And that's because none of us got enough love in our childhood That's right, right. And that's showbiz <laughs> Kid Oh yeah She's giving up her humdrum life I'm gonna be Roxy she made a scandal and a star And Sophie Decker will faint, I know uh -huh. I'll see her name get filled below Foxy, Roxy, Hart Those are my dancers Hi everybody and Merry Christmas! My name is Persuava Kisiova and I play the role of Velma Kelly in the school edition of the spectacular musical Chicago that you're about to see a part of now. I hope you enjoy it! Hello dear ACS community, I'm Nikola Kralev and I'm a part of the fantastic program of the musical. Are you ready to dive into the world of the soaring 20s and experience the jazz all around you? If you are, then stay tuned for more. Gone. Oh, gone. It's good.
and gentlemen, the McVicker Theatre, Chicago's finest home of family entertainment, is proud to announce the first. The first time anywhere there's been an act of this nature. Not only one little lady, but two. You've read about them in the papers, and now here they are, a double header. Chicago's own killer dealers, those two scintillating sinners, Roxy Hart and Velma Kelly. and I'm in the 12th grade. I'm so excited to have you as our audience today. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Hi, my name is Joanna and this is my first year in the ACS musical. I play the role of the reporter Mary Sunshine as well as the roles of some of the other reporters. The musical is a very fun and exciting experience and the people there are just so amazing. So come and watch our performance, share the experience with us. You have nothing to lose. Hi. My name is Annie and I play Roxy in Chicago the Musical. The making of Chicago was very challenging and we went through a lot. But let me tell you, the results are incredible. What we're doing really is magic. So come and let us take your breath away. That's your grounds. Self-defense. Mr. Flynn, the reporters are here. Let them in, Butch. Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Sunshine. You know my client, Mrs. Roxy Hart. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just so flattered y'all came to see little old me. I guess you want to know why I shot him, the rat. Sit down, dummy. Mr. Billy Flynn sings the press conference rag. Notice how his mouth never moves. Almost. Where'd you come from? Mississippi. But she was granted one more start The covenant of the secret heart When did you get here? 1920 How old were you? Don't remember Then what happened? I made a mess Think he stole my heart away Convinced me to elope one day A covenant girl A runaway marriage Oh, it's too terrible You poor, poor dear Who's the case My ex-boyfriend Why'd you shoot him? I was leaving. Was he angry? 
like a madman Till I said, Fred, move along She knew that she was doing wrong Then describe it He came toward me With the pistol From my bureau Did you fight him? Like a tiger He had strength and she had none And yet we both reached for the gun Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, we both, oh yes, we both, oh yes, we both reach for the gun, the gun, the gun, the gun, oh yes, we both reach for the gun, for the gun. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, we both, oh yes, we both, oh yes, we both reach for the gun, the gun, the gun, the gun, oh yes, we both reach for the gun, for the gun. Understandable, understandable, yes, it's perfectly understandable, comprehensible, comprehensible, not a bit reprehensible. So defensible. How are you feeling? Very frightened. Are you sorry? Are you kidding? What's your statement? All I say is, don't my choo choo jump the track. I give my life to bring him back. And stay away from what? the jazz and liquor. And, and the man who what? played for fun. And what? That's the thought that yeah. came upon me. Let me hear it! Reach for the gun, the gun, the gun, the gun Oh yes, they both reach for the gun, for the gun A little louder! Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, they both, oh yes, they both, oh yes, they both Reach for the gun, the gun, the gun, the gun Oh yes, they both reach Now you got the it! from ninth grade and I play Mama Morton from the Chicago musical. The musical gives me the chance to free myself and express myself and I have made so many new wonderful friends from there and I can't wait to go back to school for new live rehearsals. My name is Nina Gurgiva and I play Mona in Chicago. So if you want to see me and some other beautiful ladies killing our boyfriends on stage, be ready to watch us in May because we are coming with a huge premiere. For now, have a very lovely Christmas. Be happy, be healthy, and see you soon. Hi, I'm Kusara and I'm playing Kathleen Huniak in Chicago. I'm very thankful to be part of this production and I can't wait to see you on the spring shows of ACS Musical. Hi, I'm Stanislava Kovanjiska and I play one of the six murderers, Mona, in this year's musical Chicago. I hope to see you all on our production in the coming May 2021. Hi everyone, my name is Maria and I'm from 10th grade. I'm playing Liz from the Six Mary Murderesses of the fabulous musical Chicago. Um, I'm extremely thankful to be part of this production and hopefully I'll see you this spring. Hello, my name is Emma. I play Liz in this year's ACS edition of the Chicago Musical. I also do cool tricks on the aerial silks on one of the numbers. If you're interested to see, please come and watch the musical. Have a great holiday. Hi, my name is Ruben Mischief and I'm one of the very few boys in the musical Chicago. And because of that, I have to play two roles of Red Casey and Fogarty. If you want to know more about me and all the other amazing performances, come join us in that extraordinary experience between me and you. But until then, Merry Christmas. Hi, I am Anna Maria and I play Hollis, which is one of the murderers in Chicago. Hi, my name is Natalie and I'll be playing Hunyaki in the musical performed by ACS. I'd love for you to come. Varokrat!
Hello, my name is Bogdan Zhekov and I play in the musical the role of Famous Heart, the husband of Roxy Heart, who is being manipulated by all the characters in the story. Um, the musical has been a really helpful place for me to open up artistically and have a lot of fun during those hard times. Hi everyone, I'm Regina Kocheva and I play Officer Fogarty in the Chicago musical this year and you should absolutely watch it. Merry Christmas! Hello guys, my name is Alexandra Kubakova and I'm from 8th grade and I'm gonna play Annie in Chicago musical High Edition. So basically I'm one of the seventh murderers in cell block Tango. So hello everyone, my name is Katherine Marinova, I am a 10th grader and a participant in the ACS musical as well as in the ACS choir. I wish you a very Merry Christmas and I hope that you find something that makes you truly happy, just as I found music. Give them the old razzle-dazzle, razzle-dazzle them. Give them an act with lots of flash in it And the reaction will be passionate Give them the old hocus pocus Beat and feather them How can they see with sequence in their eyes? What if your hinges all are rusting? What if, in fact, you're just disgusting? Razzle-dazzle them, and they'll never catch wise. Give them the old razzle-dazzle, razzle-dazzle them. Give them a show that's so splendid first. Row after row will grow horse first. Give them the old flim flam flam full and fractured. How can they see the truth? A bagel, razzle dazzle them, and they'll beg you for more. <laughs> Give them the old razzle dazzle, razzle dazzle them. But since the days of old Methuselah, everyone knows the big bang.
of what I love the most about my job is being able to travel the world and see what each corner of it has to offer. And you, Bulgaria, are indeed generous. What was the name of that dance again? The Horo. I was once again impatient to see it this year. And as it turned out, I was lucky. I've shown up just in time to see the Balkan Dance Club perform the Christmas Chichovo Horo. And so, my incredibly memorable journey to the homes of all of these talented ACS performers is coming to an end. It's bittersweet to see another Christmas concert come and go. But there's always the next one. 
and each will be better than the last. Oh wait, before I get on my way, as if all of these performances weren't gift enough, ACS surprised me with one last song, and it's my favorite, Jingle Bells. So please join me from the comfort of your own sofas. Ho, 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 ho. And remember, I see you when you're sleeping, I know when you're awake, and I know when you sing along. So, shall we? Dashing through the snow, in my horse open sleigh, o'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight! Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun! <laughs> that was wonderful. You all have beautiful voices. I look forward to visiting all of you next week. And remember to be good for goodness sake. Have a Merry Christmas. Vessel of ho, 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 Christmas.